What is going on guys? Today we are going to be adding our Android screen to this beautiful BMW 3 Series. This screen has a bunch of features. The genuine iDrive system will continue to work as normal. Uh, it also runs an Android interface. It's got Apple CarPlay. All that stuff will go through at the end. Um, so if you have any questions regarding the install, drop them in the comments. Otherwise, sit back, enjoy, and let's get it. All right guys, so in the kit, you will get the new screen. Okay, this will replace the factory screen. It's got some plugs there, video input, GPS, power, all that sort of stuff there. And then on this side, you've got a SIM card slot and a SD card slot. Then we've got all of the wiring. USB here, so this will do USB input for your, um, music, movies, and Android Auto. Got a Wi-Fi antenna here for wireless CarPlay. AUX extension, which in some cars you'll need, but it's good that we send it with every kit. GPS antenna. The main harness, quad lock connector, um, and all the wiring involved, as well as a little speaker. In most cases, you don't need that speaker, so you can just get rid of it. And some in and outputs for the screen. And that is pretty much the kit. So what we can look at now is disassembly of the car. So we're gonna be removing the radio, the climate control, these air vents here, and the factory screen. Okay, it's pretty much everything that needs to come apart. And we can start with the vents here. Using a plastic panel remover, we can basically from one end, I'm gonna start from the passenger side, so from the left side, from the end here, getting underneath and prying the whole thing out. Okay, as you start to release the panel, well, you sort of can't see that, but I just picked it up from one end. You can just start guiding it out. Look how easy that was. Barely any pressure. Then we can remove some of these plugs. Now, it might be easier for you to get behind this panel with your finger, pop it out, and just unplug it here. And the push to start, that needs to be unplugged as well. It's just two little pins on either side. And what I would do is remove it from the panel with the two clips that it has and just keep it plugged in because we're going to need to remove move this gear selector out of the way in a minute next up is the climate control panels again all clips just to get this spacer part off here then you've got one two no sorry then you've got one two phillips heads Surprising when Philip says. Okay, disassembly is almost done now. We just need to get the screen out. Right at the top here, there are two Torx bits. I think they're T15s, and you need to use a right angle bit or some sort of right angle or very short screwdriver to get them out. Okay, not gonna lie, that was extremely tight to get out. So what I had to do was sort of peel it back, just check the plugs. Okay, pop the plugs out once they're out. There's heaps of space back there. Okay, so this is the new screen. Look at that, <laughs> oh yeah. Much nicer. We're not there yet, but we'll be there soon. There's a few different plugs on the new loom that you can look at. So this is CAN bus right here. Then there's uh, this key plug and also an accessory plug. Most of that will be fine. This uh, E90 is all run can, so you can leave the can plugged in. But if anything doesn't work, they're some of the things that we can look at. So then what we want to do is grab the original quad lock connector. Maybe put some tape on it. It doesn't even have tape on it. And you want to remove the fiber optic connector from it. Okay, so in the far left, we've got fiber optic. I'm going to plug in our new quad lock. Okay, just check it all goes in nicely. If it feels a bit odd, like that just did actually. Pull it out, check all the pins, all the pins are straight, good. Go back in. That's better. Okay, very important is this fiber optic. It goes into the new portion of the quad lock in the same spot. And then what we need to do is run this up to the screen. Okay, so that's gonna run up to the screen now. On the screen cable, there's this plug here, that was for the speaker, you don't need it, so we can just chop that off. Camera 12 volt, and reverse camera. So these two here, we're gonna use, because I'm adding a camera to this car. We're gonna run 
the RCA and the camera 12 volt to the back of the car. So we'll leave them free. The rest of it can get taped up. Running this cable up to here definitely won't be the easiest thing you've ever done, but it's not too bad. You've got to run the cable in so you can see this cable right here. It goes back behind this cage. Okay, you don't want to go, there's a lot of holes in this cage. You don't want to go through them. You need to go behind it, up. Meet your hand here. This is where it gets tricky. Okay, so you can only get a couple fingers in there and I don't have very big hands. Okay, feel the cable, pull it through and then do that again up to here. Okay, so it's up. So you're just running basically alongside here, up to there. Not super, super difficult, but it's just not easy, easy. Okay. USB, so we've got two USB ports. I'm gonna be running one into the center console and the other one we can put anywhere, probably just the glove box, um, which means I'll need to get that done. So I'll do that extension. All right, guys, we've run into a problem and that problem was there was no sound. On the screen, you need to select AUX for the sound of the module to come out. Um, and yeah, that, yeah, that's how sound works, but we had no sound. So first thing I'm gonna do is get to the quad lock connector. So in the quad lock connector, right over here, you can see black, white, and red going in to these pins right here. On the corresponding plug, we've got none of those pins occupied. Okay, so that's gonna do it for sure. But what we do have is twisted pairs, which I would say are probably not AUX. There's two black, lines on the plug so you've got ground and then left and then right or something like that I can't remember the exact technology but what we're gonna do is just test to see if so when these two touch each other it's telling us there's continuity so I'm gonna check one pin I'm gonna tap on these okay what does that mean that means the AUX connection is not behind the radio here okay so what do I have to do there's a couple things we can do. I'm gonna do it the legit way, but I'll show you some other ways you can do it as well. Okay, I'm definitely gonna lose some of you guys here, but I'll still explain this. Right here we have three solder connections, okay? So you've got green, white, red, white, and purple, looks like solid purple. So what I've done here is remove this panel at the back of the car, okay, the rear vents, it just unclips. It's very easy to remove, just pop it out of the way. And what I did was plug in the AUX cable here. Okay, so this AUX cable is the one that we saw at the beginning of the video that I said we, we didn't need, and I was wrong. We do need it. So what you can do, because there's no AUX up front, okay, which we looked at, you can literally plug it in right there, run it to the quad lock connector, and plug it into where the AUX portion is, okay, which is in within that, which I'll show you where it is. Or you can do what I've done, chop off one end, hardwire it so this plug here is connected directly to the AUX in the front here hardwire it tape it up and run it so it's getting we're doing essentially the exact same as plugging it into there but instead it's hardwired so you don't see anything it just looks much cleaner okay so I'm tape all these up I'll run this to the front and I'll show you where to plug it in and if that doesn't make sense drop a comment below so once you've either hardwired that AUX connection or just plugged it in like I said completely up to you you're gonna run it up into behind here, so you can remove some of this stuff like I did. Run it up, it's not too hard, you can just figure out the best way to do that. This was the original AUX connection. So if you're really lucky, you just leave that plugged in and taped up like I did right at the beginning, and it will work. If it doesn't, you wanna unplug the connection that was done here, and plug in your new cable that you've just run. It's the one that I just run now, okay? And then you can set this up. Okay, moment of truth. Now we can check sound. If you ever touch the screen and it doesn't switch, just give it about 10 seconds. It means the Android system's booting up in the background. There you go. Boom. Perfect AUX quality. Okay, just like that. Steering wheel controls work. Steering wheel control up and down works. iDrive controller works. Reverse camera works, I already tested that. Apps, 
Look at this. Look at this, guys. Insane. Look at all that stuff. Let's get this thing back together and then we can look at the screen and how it all works. All right guys, here she is. Job is completed. So when you start her up, you get the connected drive, connected iDrive sort of boot screen. Okay, then it will bring you right into Bluetooth. Okay, now what I'll do is I'll just quickly connect to this just to show you. Okay, it'll bring you over to Speedplay. It'll say connecting. You'll get use CarPlay on your phone. Make sure you hit that. You'll see your phone and then boom, you've got wireless CarPlay right there. So I'm using the factory iDrive controller to control the screen right now. And that is what Apple CarPlay looks like. I'm not sure if the camera can see, but that is really, really high quality. That screen looks really good. All right, guys, this is the home screen. So from here, you can use the factory iDrive controller or you can use your hands to touch. So you've got navigation, communication. That's going to be your Bluetooth, how you're going to pair your iPhone or Android. Uh, it does have some music saved on the hard drive. You can delete that. You can add your own music, whatever you want. Same as video, you can put some HD videos on there. Car info, that's just gonna bring you back to your factory iDrive system. Okay, so that's what you're used to looking at. Touch the screen, bring you right back. Dashboard, pretty cool. So rev the car, you can see the revs go. Um, as you drive, speed will obviously show up as well. And we can just scroll up, get out of that. On the left-hand side here, you've got apps. So these are all of the apps that are currently downloaded. From here, you can scroll down from the top, go into Wi-Fi, connect your personal hotspot, and you can go onto Google Chrome, go into Play Store, download all of the things that you want. That's easy. Okay, car, same thing as car info. It'll bring you right back. Settings, so in here, you've got a whole bunch of uh, system settings you can play with. There's a whole bunch of things in there. AUX position, brightness, um, navigation settings, sound settings, time and date. And we've got all that stuff set up. Android settings here. Okay, we can go back. Navi, so that's gonna bring you into iGo Primo. You can change that to Google Maps if you want. Okay, we get out of that. Um, and then music, so that's like the music that's on the device. Uh, reverse, click into reverse. It's gonna bring up your camera. Okay, that's the camera that we added. That's going to help out a lot. And guys, apart from that, on the side here, that you can insert a SIM card. So if you want 4G without having to connect hotspot, you can slide a SIM card right in the in the side of the device here. You might have seen the sticker there before. And on this side, you can put a SD card. And we'll get out of that. Guys, that is the system done. It was a pretty straightforward install. Um, if you have any questions regarding the installation, just drop them in the comments below. Um, yeah, pretty happy with it. The screen is really good. Just doing some more testing now and we'll continue to test this for another hour or so, make sure everything's all working perfectly and then I can walk through everything with our customer. Um, yeah, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, the link for this screen, this exact screen is in the description. Um, and yeah, in the description, you can get in touch with us as well. Uh, me, we're in Australia, in Melbourne. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.